Well, we got some fun flying today and some fun stuff to check out. Hey, thanks for watching. I thought I'd explore the Disney area in Florida. And uh, right now I'm looking at it at nighttime here. Not a whole lot of the park is lit up. There's not, not much here to see. So we're going to uh, switch to daytime here shortly and get a better look at it. So if you're familiar with my channel, you may know that I fly Disney often. And I have, oh yes, you can see the plaza down here below us for the uh, Cinderella Castle. But I fly, or I have flown it, uh, several times in planes and helicopters here in Florida and out in California. I've done it with the default scenery. I've done it with some add-on scenery from flightsim.to. So I thought it would be nice to see since this was an area that was supposed to have gotten some serious upgrades with World Update 10. I thought we'd explore it. So, so now we can really see it and that last little update seems to have added some weird artifacts to the water. You can see it there. There's like tile lines in the water. I don't see it in the land, but in the water as I'm going over it. Not if I'm passing by water, but when I'm going over it. So it looks good. Otherwise, I think the trees are still kind of funky. <laughs> there are some weird looking trees uh, on the map for sure. But you have to get pretty low to notice that. I think you know, this whole area looks great at around 700 to 800 feet, maybe to 1,000 feet. You can see nice detail, but not too far away. I mean, you can see it here that it looks pretty good. It really, you know, I'm flying, I think, about 500 feet here, and you can see the, there's the racetracks for the, the little mini go-karts there, and some of the pavilions like the merry-go-round and so forth here behind the castle. a lot of the area back here is not that you don't ever see that's that's where the uh, workers and stuff but you can see the different pavilions and you know we got frontier frontier land and everything down here yeah, it's pretty good like i said if you get down below 500 feet this the park doesn't really look that great I mean, but you can see there's a lot of detail these are all the trailers and things set up behind the scenes and I'm actually passing over the employee parking lot right now. And the, the parking lots here have been really treated nicely. There, there's a lot of cars in them. There's a lot of lines on the parking lots. You can see, look at the cars over to the right. And there's a lot of nice lines. So really made a difference here. And you can see here the parking lines, the angled lines in the cars. And so it's Disney. The parking lots are pretty full. Mickey Mouse Pond up here. The easy way to find it is leave Kissimmee, fly north and look for that. <laughs> now, south of us is Animal Kingdom. We're going to go ahead and head over there. And I got to warn you, you're not going to see a lot. The tree is there, the tree of life, but you can't see any detail. It just looks like a giant Microsoft tree. Um, so it's, it's really... I mean, I can't see any detail in it. You can see other parts of the park, and you can see kind of where the wildlife runs free. So we're not going to spend a lot of time there, but once we get to it, we'll take a quick run around it. And then from there, we're going to head east. And when we head east, we will actually pass past the... We will fly past the Dolphin and the Swan Hotel and be at Epcot Center. And Epcot Center looks pretty nice. Same thing with the water in front. Again, something in the last update they started doing this, so I'm not sure if it'll go away or what, but certain water down here, when I fly over it, I see like tile lines. Not when I fly past them, but just over them, and only when it's, you know, when I'm close. So, so you may or may not be able to see the tree over here to the right of the mountain. It's kind of a big green lump over here. I don't know what the mountain is called in the Animal Kingdom. I haven't been there. I've only went there once and it was so, so long ago. Um, I don't know what 
but yeah, you can see here. You can see some of the parks, some of the amusements here. And, uh, we'll go by, but you can see how the tree, the they're, they're weird blocks with like broccoli tops. <laughs> so you know, photogrammetry trees. They, they have to get rid of all of those and replace it with you know, natural looking trees. But you can see it right there at our about four o'clock position. There's nothing there. It's you can fly by it slow and low, and you really just won't see anything because it, it got turned into a Microsoft thing. I do not see any detail there. But we'll go up here, we'll check out Epcot Center. Of course, we'll pass a couple of resorts here. And, and now, most of the resorts, most of the amusements, you know, the roads look really good. If You might see some of those as we're going by. You can see that they're not greenish, they look great. A lot of the hotels and resorts look great. There's a ton of detail. My buildings are on medium. Just so you know, right now, my buildings are all set to medium, as are my trees. Maybe uh, it wouldn't help me down here. I don't think we're cranking up the trees. But it's a fun area to fly, and a lot of the non-amusement areas look great if you're three to five hundred feet. There's a ton of detail, a ton to look at if you can get past the trees. Uh, so, okay, so here we got the the swan closest to us on our left and then the dolphin right behind that. Uh, but what I was saying is, you know, the rest of this whole area to me looks great at an altitude of three to five hundred. I mean, like this, you know, the hotels, the the resorts, the swimming pools, they all look really, really nice. The main attractions like Disney, the water parks, they don't look quite that good when you get down that low, but again, 500, 700 foot altitude, I think they look really, really nice. Uh, you may, not, may or may not agree, but you can see it here, and you can make up your own mind, or you can fly it yourself. Either way. So I think that's that Indy racetrack there. Got a bunch of race cars around a, I'm assuming something like a winter circle down there in the middle. If you get down closer, you can see it. The Epcot ball looks Im impressive. A lot of this is vastly improved. Like you can see the rooftops on that building, all the AC units and power units. And again, I'm on medium for my building right now. Frame rates, not as good as I get in the mountains. Every time I've checked it, it's been somewhere around 35 to 36 to this area. So now this is Epcot at night. A little bit nicer looking. It's got all the lanterns going around the world. I don't know what they call it, the pavilion here where they represent all the different countries. It, it does look nicer. The Epcot ball doesn't light up. Uh, Maybe somebody will someday work on a lighting package for the Disney. That would be pretty nice. <laughs> uh, I know they got fireworks too off of one of the barges or islands here in the middle of Epcot Center, I think, on a nightly basis. But the detail is still very nice, even at nighttime, looking really good. So it's uh, sunset, not quite nighttime here, but looks pretty good, I think. World Update 10 Exploration. So again, now we're just flying over parts of Florida. We're going to, I think it's Universal Studios. We're going to see here in a little bit. I think that's what it is again. <laughs> I only went there once and it was a, such a long, long time ago. So, but that's coming up on some of the other areas. There's, there's so much to see there. There's so many different amusement areas beyond just the Disney parks. I really had no idea. I knew there was a water park here and there, but there's a lot of those. And then I see parks with roller coasters and the Ferris wheel over there to our left at another park. And so yeah, there's a, there's a ton to see here without a doubt. And it looks really, really good. Golf courses, nice and crisp and clear. You can see the sand traps here on my left. You can see that golf course. You can see some of the sand traps. You can see the greens. I didn't notice if you could see the flags, but I didn't get quite that low. I think you'd have to get almost down a tree top to, to see if those were there. But the you can see the sand traps putting greens. And uh, T 
tee up points on the golf course in the round here, which I, I think is pretty neat. So here we go. I think this is Universal Studios. Uh, I know I see you go by one building here that says AMC and this golf course. And uh, I think Cirque de Soleil. Cirque de Soleil. <laughs> I think that's this white building right here. Uh, the Circus of the Sun. Let's just put it into English. But you can see the parking lot, the cars, really nice, and the variation in the lines. I just like, yeah, see AMC. And, uh, yes, I think, I think this is Universal Studios. It looks really nice, whatever it is. It looks really, really cool, but it's big, so I'm thinking it has to be Universal Studios. But you can see again in the water, you can see some of the, the lines. That just started. It's uh, something that I, I don't care for, but if you're like me and you spend most of your time in the mountains, and I haven't seen it up there yet. So far, I've only seen it in an area like this. It's really densely populated. It may be because all of this is, you know, enhanced photogrammetry imagery. But I like it. I think it looks really nice. It's fun to fly around it once in a while. And we're in the 170 from Cessna, a very nice little slow plane, very easy to drop it into a slow flight for touring and not have to worry about it dropping down on you, but you can see the roads look pretty good. I think it is. So we've got a, a little ways to go to get down to an airport and where the sun will be going down. Yeah, I hope you stay with the flight and just enjoy it. It's it's really I try not to rubberneck and whip my head back and forth. I know it's it's hard. I I want to see the scenery as much as I want to record it and show it off because it's always that's that's partially why I record these is because I can't take it all in when I'm flying it. It's just so much. So I love watching my videos just because it gives me a chance to actually sit back and see the flight again. And, See what I might have missed in some of the scenery. But this will be a, a nice, slow, relaxing flight over as much of the busy part of this area as I can fly over. I'm going to try and go over, you know, if I see colorful areas, because I know that there's going to be some where we'll see some definite color that will show us where uh, some sort of amusements and resorts and so forth are because they're all over the place and that's really all you're going to look for is <laughs> the colorful buildings and decorations this one here so, see swimming pools and that may just oh no yeah look at what do we got there uh, Okay, yeah, so there we go. So, giant yo-yos, and, and, and uh, oh, and a swimming pool shaped like a bowling pin, okay. So, yeah, like I said, some pretty neat stuff to see. No idea what that is, <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Yeah, that the details there, and then I could actually tell that those are yo-yos. Uh, another area over here, yeah, see? Nice color, nice houses, orange roofs, purple roofs, turquoise roofs. There's another, another parking lot down there with the other. These people all parked for them. Oh, what is this water park up here? Yeah. And the parking lot is full too. Uh, looks like uh, it's got a water park. Yeah. Oh, maybe this is a big shopping thing. I don't know, because it doesn't look like a shopping thing. Looks like castles. No idea. No idea, but it looked pretty nice. Looked pretty detailed. And again, my frame rates, they're about what I would expect with this type of populated area. Again, I spend a lot of time out in the country and the mountains and you know, the water park. Oh, look at the water slides. Oh, you can see the individual channels on it. Not you know, like tracks. You can have the seven or eight people side by side sliding down. Um, 
yeah, you know, I, I like to fly where there's a lot less population, and so I tend to get better frame rates, obviously, 40 to 42, 44 sometimes, no matter what plane I'm flying. But down here, you know, you want to get low and see the detail, and I'm not really suffering for the frames now. Not like I have in the past. You know, if I go through New York, although even New York, when I went through New York the other day, my frames used to drop down below 30 if I got too close to the buildings, and now they're staying somewhere around 35, 36, like this. Oh, wow, look at this sunset. They will make it to the airport. There were a couple of planes ahead of me. Uh, are they still out there? Yeah, they were. I've been following up. They've both been heading towards the airport, although they're probably going towards the major airport and I'm going to the side to a smaller one. Uh, they have a big water park here, too. Yes, yeah, so you can see out of the trees, they look like asparagus. Fat asparagus stalks. They were out ahead of me a little while ago. I'm just kind of in line behind at least two guys that are on their way to that airport. Might be able to make out the plane now. There's one that's well, probably at about a 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock position, and then another one that's around 11 o'clock position. So, yeah, like 10 and 11. What golf courses? Yeah, a lot of hotels, and they all seem to be so detailed. Yeah, so, like I said, you may be able to see those two little blips of light way over on the left side when I'm looking in that direction and see those planes there following towards the airport. Eight hundred to a thousand foot that will be close to pattern height when I arrive. Actually, I think the elevation is around a hundred foot maybe. So yeah, I'm just going to move it out. Park a lot, whatever it was. Not too popular. Or maybe not. swamp land, that's for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of areas I would not want to lose power over because you'd have a very hard time not sinking. It's uh, swampy, but I guess all of Florida is just sand. It's one massive sandbar. There's no dirt, real dirt yards unless the dirt's trucked in, but I think for the most part everything Everything, if you dig down, you, you, you eventually will hit water. So, a lot of soggy areas I would not want to have to put down for an emergency landing. I think I can see the runway. Maybe not. Hard to tell. But I can usually pick up the runway lights from a pretty. Wow, well, look at that. That was a pretty sunset. I tried flying outside of VR, and uh, I guess the term everyone's using now is pancake mode <laughs> for non-VR, and, and I couldn't do it. I was all over the place. Of course, I don't have a big monitor. I only have my laptop monitor, but I, I, real, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't see. I felt so constricted. <laughs> so VR has definitely spoiled me forever. Uh, it's okay because I think at this point it can only get better. And it's all. Uh, it's, a, it's a airplane directly ahead of us. I should be able to get that out. And the runway is flashing. The 
little bit ahead of him to the right. Not sure. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Just enjoying the nice fight. Picked the C-170 for a couple of reasons. One, I knew it was a, a nice plane to fly for touring if you want to go low and slow. The window placement is really nice. You get a really nice view, I think, you know, of, of everything around you. Of course, it's not too unusual with high wings, but I think the the front windshield on this is really wrapped around nicely. And, you know, I think a really nice view when you say it's I'd see it, so I picked it for that, but also stay around about 900, and like I said, I think the field elevation is 100, so if we stay between 800 and 1,000, we should be good when we get there. Yes, I think that's the big airport that everybody's heading for. But we're not, there's a smaller little strip I think. reason I picked this plane is because I flew it not too long ago on a flight with my brother. He and I were both flying them. And we were up in uh, British Columbia, I think, Vancouver area. Yeah, we were, we were beach hopping um, down a big river with them because they're, they're really deep for that. You know, you can, you can find some really fun areas to just land. And it went when we were doing it, of course, I'd get out of my plane in VR and I'd, I'd stand and look around the, the scenery, but my landings weren't the best in this plane, and so he is, of course, busting me, as you know, our brother's supposed to do, when you, when you flump something, <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to try and do a real nice landing on this, and that way, because I know he'll watch this, he's watching it, he'll watch it to the end. He's one of the few that watches my videos to the end because he loves flying as much as I do. And if you're not flying, then you're watching it or reading it about it or thinking about it anyway. He said, uh, so I wanted to do a real nice landing for him. And I did it. I actually porpoised it once. It bounced. So bummed out because I was coming in at a nice speed. I thought I had a good speed and everything else. So maybe we'll do better, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. It's it's not an easy plane to land. That is for certain. Which is kinda funny because it really is a, a trainer, but it's a it's a tail dragger and it's a it's an old style plane. So it's got some interesting characteristics. This is someone in the forum, one of the forums or on uh, one of the sites made a comment about the old planes and that they shouldn't even be bringing them back. Nobody likes to fly them, like the, the Beechcraft Twin, the D-18 the there, or the, the Beechcraft Staggerwing, or the Boeing. 247. I mean, beautiful planes. And there are a lot of us that like to fly them. I mean, I love to fly those planes. But I was thinking about it, and I don't want to say this as an insult, but to me it seems like those planes are attractive to the people that really want to fly. They have to do a lot of work to do the flying. And I think a lot of the modern planes are really designed for people that like to fly in airplanes. And I don't say that to belittle them, but to me, it's a whole lot easier to fly something like a really nice Diamond DA-62 than the Staggerwing or the Boeing 247 or the Beach Twin that require... Yeah, that was a little bit better, still a little bouncy. <laughs> and I 
didn't quite stay to the center, but yeah, look at the runway. Even the runways are improved. I noticed that on a lot of areas that the runway, the lines, the pavement, all, all improved, not just here, but in many areas. So, but yeah, I thought that was funny about the old plans, but I'm glad they bring them in. I love them. They're my favorites. And I like the newer ones too. So yeah, we made it just in time before it got dark. How about that? Awesome. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the skies.